Jesus would. And our social media family. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between the Lord and I. I keep Falling in love with him over and over, over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between the Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over, over and over again. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I am here tonight with my mini me, Amanda. We together are Jesus Woman. Welcome to Jesus Woman. Go check it out, y'all. It's pretty cool. And we have a website also call it Jesus Woman if you want to check that out. We worked hard on it. So, it's a website and we also have a TikTok and a Facebook. And you can find all this information on our YouTube channel. And, um, yeah. All the links uh, of everything that we have I believe on all social media platforms is on our YouTube channel. So go check it out. Absolutely. In the About section. Now, tonight, this message is entitled simply keeping it real I'm going to be reading from the New Testament 2nd Timothy the book of 2nd Timothy and the New Testament chapter 3 I'm going to begin at verse 12 and um, I'm also going to be reading out of uh, a little from chapter 4 of this same book <clears throat> chapter 12 uh, chap I'm sorry chapter 3 verse, verse 12. 12 of the book of 2nd Timothy reads yea and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all scriptures, well, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Chapter 4, verse 1 reads, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, whom shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, <clears throat> preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. Verse 3 For the time will come 
when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. Verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Verse 5, But watch thou in all things endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7 I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8 Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his words. I am here. And I am a minister. God called, anointed, and appointed me to preach the word. He also commissioned me to be a light. And, you know, God called me years ago, years ago, as a little girl. And I am so proud to be a child of God. I am so honored to be his daughter. And I am so honored to be a representative of Jesus Christ. I am an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. I am here to say, you know, I've chatted with people that have been hurt, mistreated, taken advantage of, broken down, going to this building that they call church. I was raised in a church as a little girl, but I stopped going to church because I saw a lot of hypocrisy. I saw a lot of people that were mean, evil, and just hurting people and taking advantage of people. And I myself personally have gone through that. I was raised in a church and um, as a child and um, that was like my home church and I went there for many years and then I started going to uh, another church in South Carolina that's my second home church I started going to in North Charleston South Carolina um, and with all hopes that this church would be better than the church that I was raised in um, and you know, in the process, I realized that this church was the same. It was just a different place, different people. Um, you know, I've seen throughout my lifetime, you know, many places, many people that are putting on the form of godliness, pre proclaiming the uh, to be a child of God, proclaiming to repre represent the kingdom of heaven. And... Um, you know, they are wolves in sheep clothing, and uh, they are there in the house of God um, to get rich, um, raising money for many things and living off that money, and none of it has to do with God. Using people, taking advantage of people, hurting people, helping themselves to people. Um, me personally, I've seen a lot. Uh, I went through a lot. Um, and the church, uh, wow, the church that um, I can say that shocked me the worst was, you know, by this time, I'm a young adult and I'm in my 20s and I'm watching things unfold and being told it is not what I see, but I know it is what I see. Um, me personally, 
I, you know, wanted, you know, to believe that everybody that was going to church was going to heaven, but that is not so. Um, that's why the Bible tells you to study to show yourself approved, that when you hear false winded doctrine, you will know that the, these things that, uh, that these people are saying is not from Christ Jesus. And um, be faithful. I'm, I'm here to say to anybody that truly loves Jesus Christ, get to know Jesus Christ for yourself and be faithful to him, not to man, but be faithful in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because ultimately, listen and remember this, Jesus created us all. He is the he is the source. He is the person that is going to uh, at the end on Judgment Day. We have to give an account for our life. We have to give an account for the things we said. We have to give an account for the things we did in our lives. You you could try to 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 um, you know lie and talk your way out of it, but God know it all. You cannot you cannot get over on Jesus and. Your life, you're going to be an open book. You're an open book right now, but your life is going to replay. And Jesus see it all. He hear it all. And if you're not real in your walk and your relationship with Jesus Christ, heaven is not going to be your home. You're sending your own self to hell. Jesus Christ is giving each and every one an opportunity to get it right right now mm -hmm. while you still have life. Mm -hmm. uh, the pastor... Um, at this church in South Carolina where I was going, you know, and you're, you're saying if Someone knows if like if you know Jesus Christ and you're not taking your relationship with him person Like if you're not taking your relationship with him seriously, mm -hmm. then you're not going to heaven That's what you're right. saying. If you're not taking your relationship with Jesus Christ seriously I don't care how much you go to church. I don't care how much you go to Sunday school I don't care how much you know the Word of God if you are right. not living for Jesus if you are not sincere in your heart with your walk with right. him Jesus no you're putting on the form of your sounding yeah, light you're setting yourself up for doom yes yes you're you're setting yourself up for damnation eternal damnation mm. so if you are one of those people mm -hmm. repent right now where you are this moment mm -hmm. this second repent and sincerely ask, sincerely yeah. and ask god for forgiveness right. and truly get your life in order while you while you still have time while the mercy doors are still open, hallelujah, while the mercy doors are still open. There are many people that are causing people to fall away from, from the Lord. It is not, I'm going to say to all those that have been hurt out there in the church, because I've spoken to many, I've talked to many, if it's not on the phone, it's through text. I've spoken to many people that are hurting, that are broken because they've been mistreated, taken advantage of, and used in this building called church. Listen here. Don't let your anger be towards God because he didn't do it to you. It was people that did it to you. And I'm here to say to forgive those people. Don't forget, but forgive these people to remember the lesson you went through and, and so that it won't happen again, so that you won't allow it to happen to you again. So, you know, forgive these people and move forward in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Ask Jesus to help you to live that life in him. Ask Jesus to open up your understanding to his voice and to the reading of the word of God. And, um, you know, and Jesus will. He loved each and every one of us. He don't love one more than the other. We are all his children, no matter what race you are, no matter what part of the world you came from, he loves us all. And um, so, you know, don't allow hate to form in your heart. Ask God to help you to love, hallelujah, to have that love that Jesus had for us. Ask Jesus to help you to love your enemies in spite of it all and keep moving forward in this race. Keep loving Jesus. Keep pressing your way. Keep asking Jesus to take away anything or any person that is in your life that should not be there. 
and you keep your focus on him hallelujah keep your focus on him that's what makes the difference at the end you and i one day will hear jesus say well done hallelujah my good and faithful servant and we in heaven will be our eternal home one day and i will embrace you all in the name of jesus um i was talking to um some people that have been hurt by pastors, been hurt by ministers, been talked to like they weren't human beings. And, and, the, and these people in the, in the church, these pastors, these ministers, these church people have left these people broken. I don't like it. And I know Jesus don't like it. It happened to me. And you know what? It would never happen again in Jesus' name. I was young, I was naive, but now my eyes are open and I'm not confused anymore. But God took me through because he knew I would be bold enough to stand up and say, these people are not of Jesus. They are putting on the form and fashion, they're using the word of God for their own selfish, for their own selfish deeds that they have. They are not serving him. They are not um, in it with a pure heart to win souls for Jesus. A lot of these churches, these people in these churches are there to get rich. They'll manipulate you if you allow it. They'll take advantage of you. They'll take advantage of your family. They'll use you up until they can't use you no more and then they'll go right to the next person and they'll leave you broken so my brother and my sisters that have been broken your sister amanda here i love you and then my mini me she love you and that's what my facebook page is about and i pulled her in so it's our Facebook page. That's what our YouTube, what is it, channel? Yeah. That's what our YouTube channel is about. To reach out to people in the spirit of love. That's what, and, so, that's what sorry. I was just going to say, that's what our, um, that's what Jesus Woman is about on all of our social media platforms that we're, we're on. Like, it doesn't matter which platform it is. TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. Instagram, my mom handles Instagram, um, and you can find her by typing in Amanda Weeks in Instagram. But yeah, um, and, and our our website, that's what Jesus Woman is about. Yes. We're just trying to spread this this positivity and about Jesus as much as we can. So that's why we're on so many platforms. Yes, we're sharing the word. We're sharing about Jesus because there there are many that. Um, don't know him. There are many that, you know, gave their life over to Jesus, but not living for him. There are many that have given their life over to Jesus, but have been broken by people, crooked people, evil people. That's the word for you people that are playing with the word of God, that are playing with God and causing people to fall away, fall away from Jesus. My brothers, my sisters that have been hurt, come back to Jesus. He wasn't the source. He wasn't the person that hurt you. It was these wicked, false-hearted brothers and sisters. But I'm here to say, forgive them and put your focus on Jesus. Ask Jesus to heal your heart. Hallelujah. Ask Jesus to show you his way. Ask Jesus to create within you a clean heart and renew your spirit in him and he will do so hallelujah um i was in this church in uh, south carolina and uh, my pastor you know whom i wanted to love so dearly as a father and i do love him very much you know um but i learned that he is not you know, the person that I thought he, you know, him to be. You know, I thought he was um, a fireball for Jesus. But um, 
I stayed there for almost 12 years. And uh, the more I learned of him, the more um, I spent time with him, you know, he basically, you know, um, began to, his the real him began to come out. And um, I was broken, I was hurt, and um, I was deceived on many, 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 uh, many, many ways and many just, you know, um, situations I was deceived by him, by other ministers in the church, by his children. This is not what Jesus is about. He's about salvation. He came that we may have life and that we may have life more abundantly. And Jesus is love. He died for you and I that we may be able, that anybody that would like to give their life over to Jesus Christ will be able to you know, ask Jesus for forgiveness of their sins and ask Jesus to come into their hearts and be their Lord and Savior. This pastor, um, he was helping himself to, you know, women in the church. He said that all the women in the church belong to him. Even if you're married, you belong to him. Uh, a lot of messages that he preach he'll first he'll he'll read the word he'll read the scripture and you know at first you know he'll stick to the scripture and then he'll venture off you know but me being who I am you know the Spirit of God began to you know talk to me and you know the Spirit of God would tell me a lot of times not just the pastor but a lot of these ministers and God would say to me that this is not from me this is not from me Listen, he said, Amanda, listen. Um, the pastor would take me out a lot, take me to dinner, um, and he had a hand problem. You know, he would constantly be touching me and forcing himself on me. Amanda, if you want to lay down, you can lay down. I know it's late, but um, I feel like this needed to be said and um, I needed to come on and share because a lot of people are hurting and I want you all to know you're not alone but I want you all to know that you are not at your end that you know what God allowed you to go through you know so that you can know that these things and these people are not from him and God sent me here to be a voice to your ear to say if you're in a situation like this if you're in a church you being mistreated you being taken advantage of you being manipulated get out of it these people are not of Christ. Mm -hmm. God is love. And you don't have to go to that building to have a relationship with Jesus. You can have a relationship with Jesus anywhere. All you need to do is first give your life over to him. Secondly, um, I, I know that Bibles aren't available to everyone depending on your situation, but if you can, you eventually, sooner or later, you need to get yourself Holy Bible. It doesn't have to be uh, a physical Bible. It could be like on the Bible app. Um, but I, I suggest the King James Version Holy Bible. Um, and you could also get the Kids Version because it is very detailed and sometimes like the, the wording of it is very like, like sometimes it can be hard to understand. So it's easier to get a kid version where it's it's more modern time speaking so that it's easier to understand they break it down and make it simple so that and more modern speaking because this is like the more old-fashioned you know wording and um if you get the kids version you get like the like you said the breaking it down um summaries of stories until you feel like you're you're um you feel confident enough to go into a more detailed Bible. Um, so yeah, like sooner or later, I suggest you get either a Bible app or um, a physical Bible to read because you do need to get to know Jesus. Absolutely. And the way to get to know Jesus is through the Bible. It's through because prayer. Through it's prayer. Through talking and to Jesus because Jesus will communicate with you. And the and, Bible and because the Word of God. he left this here for us 
so that we it's like a a, a, a guy guideline. and yes. and it's about who he is and you know um w- w- what he's done to show that he's loved us and you need to read the bible if you are thinking of, if you are trying to give your life over to him uh, sooner or later in your life because his words will help a lot and the more you get to know him you'll be able to tell and identify what is of him and what is not of him but you know you, you need to do that to you know grow grow in and your walk. You, right you don't have to spend any money if you do a bible app there's free bible apps like i said you know don't feel bad about getting a bible app if that's what you prefer there's nothing wrong with it it's just your preference and actually i just want to show the bible app i have because it's the king james version like the one we listen to the one you put on at night like at night time yes honey but it, it, it's it's literally i think it's literally the same thing because um no no this this bible the bible you have right now yes is the bible i have on my phone mm-hmm. It, it literally reads the same thing. It's just on an app that's different. And it's free. Mm-hmm. So, let me just show what I have. It's called Holy Bible. King James Holy Bible. Absolutely free. It's fun. It gives activities about, like, the Bible. You could do, like, act- Bible quizzes and, you know, get points. And it's really cool. But this is it. If they can see it. <laughs> really tiny can you well it's really really tiny yeah you can look it up in the play store right it's the uh, holy bible king james version let me see if i can um yeah put it pull it up in the play store and maybe um or go to um uh, the gallery and and, like blow it up so Mm -hmm. they can see it Mm -hmm. my nephew is too much this it, right here. Yeah. Holy Bible. So, sorry. Mm-hmm. Holy Bible King. It's, it's backwards, but <laughs> King James Bible. Holy Bible. King James Bible. That's how it will look. And um, let me show you. If I show you inside of the app, when you click on it, it gives a scripture for the beginning of the No. An encouraging <laughs> word at the beginning of the day. Then a scripture. And then it also has morning prayers. Like, you could challenge yourself if you want to pray more. You can either pray more on your own time, or you can follow the app until you feel comfortable to just start praying on your own time, like making a schedule for yourself. Or you can follow the schedule of the app. It gives you a morning prayer and a night prayer. Re- reread it first before you say amen, because you want to make sure you agree with the prayer. And if you don't agree with the prayer, sometimes what I do is just I, I just pray on my own. Because praying is just talking to God. So I just pray on my own. Just talk to him. Because if I don't agree with, like, the prayer they're giving me, I don't say amen to it. Right. I just, you Absolutely. know. And then eventually it, like, resets um, each day. So it gives a new prayer each day. Right. And um, this is the Bible. Mine is only a black screen because I put it as black. But it has all the books of the King James Bible. And then it has a studying section. If you like to quiz yourself and study, and then it has a you section where it lets you know, because I personally, I feel like I need to spend more time with God. So I like to see how much, because when I'm on this app, I want it to be about learning and connecting with God. So I like to see where I'm at. And it says I'm at my study time overall. I've been over, I've been on this for like a month, okay. a month or two, okay. something like that. But my study time overall is... 2734 minutes okay. sometimes i put on the bible app mm-hmm. but like i listen to the bible a little bit and then um i might do some other stuff so some of that time is just having like the app open but the rest of the time or some of the other time is literally just me listening to the bible or doing a bible quiz mm-hmm. and i've done 12 prayers on the app but I pray in general. I try. I try to keep that as a habit. I need to keep it as a habit. But yeah, that's. I just wanted to show y'all that um, it's it's pretty cool. It got it got podcasts too. It says one day's morning. I, I don't know what the other stuff. But <laughs> I just showed you what I know about. And if you need some motivation, just 
watch my mother's videos awesome a lot of motivation about Jesus and you know about however you're feeling if you are feeling sad watch one of my mother's videos and you won't and I pray that you won't feel sad anymore because Amen. everything she does is positive oh, and she talks about positive stuff all the time and whenever she's she's um making a video her goal is to make you smile or to and to make you feel good so i mean to tell the truth know, and to tell and tell the to yeah tell the truth but you know also we love to uh both, oh, yeah, i'm, both I'm of done us, i'm just both of us you know we like to just share you know uh share positive energy you know um my my happiness my joy the smile that you all see on my face jesus has truly been good to me he really has been good to me um this church where i was i was attacked physically almost every service night um phys- me. and you see how you see how that's the people it was the people attacking her not right. god and what a, a mistake that a lot of people do is that they blame God for what the people are doing. Right. Because the absolutely. people are supposed to be representatives of him. The absolutely. people are supposed to be Christians. But but God is not doing this stuff. If evil is coming out of someone's heart, it's because the fruits of their spirit, not God's, but their own spirit is evil. It's that's wicked. why. Amen. That's right. That's why. And that's what he calls wolves and sheep clothing. That's right. And if you get to know Jesus, then you'll know how to identify Absolutely. wolves and sheep clothing. Absolutely. Um, it's a person. Wolves and sheep clothing is just a person that is identifying as a, a, a G- Jesus lover, but is not actually serving and living for Jesus. Amen. That's what that is. Amen. And these people that attacked her they were not of god no they're not they were against her and because she's real they didn't agree with her spirit their spirit didn't agree with her spirit and they wanted to hurt her and that's what you call evil mean people wolves and she clothing amen Amen. People that you can't you can't trust people like that because right. wolf and sheep clothing are are two faced. They talk to you one way, yes. and then they the the next time like the more you interact with that yes. person, yes. you start seeing these things right. that you're like, I didn't even know it was like this. Absolutely. I didn't know you were like this. Absolutely, and um, that's what happened to my mom when she she she. There's people throughout her life that she's trusted. Right. And they screwed her over, and she, she she trusted them, and then the more she got to know them, she started to see a side of them that she hadn't seen right. because they didn't show her. Right. But you know what? God revealed who they were to yes. her in yes. time. Yes. And you know she's stronger. She's wiser. Amen. She's always Amen. been beautiful. Thank you. Honey. You know. But you just know. be careful yes. about who you associate yes yourself with and yes. be careful about who you call friend because absolutely there are a lot there are good people in this world but there's not enough this whole world as much as as much good people in this world there are there are a lot of evil people so be careful because you could you could think that you're meeting a nice person and they might not be nice so be careful about who you trust be careful about who you call friend. Be careful about what you share. Because like I said, there's a lot of good people, but there's not enough. Honestly, everyone should be good. The recording cut me off, so I couldn't finish what I was saying. Therefore, I will tell you what I said. I said, everyone should be good, but not everyone is. So be careful. Yes. No, I, um... I was in. Uh, I'm done. I'm okay, done. honey. Excuse me. And uh, the notification you gave. Mm-hmm. I think it's saying it's about to cut off soon. So okay. We so if you want to do a part two, then I'll do that for you. Okay. So if it stops, just let me. Know. All right, honey. So, um, this pastor, you know, since the day you know I came, you know, uh, to South Carolina and start living with this pastor and his family, this pastor couldn't, you know, wouldn't keep his hands off of me and sexual um he was you know uh, violating me and uh grabbing personal parts and you know uh 
violating me on every hand and laughing in my face and um, and you know I was told by his children his daughters you know that they can they feel like they could do whatever they want to do to you and you can't do anything about it and they said if you report me or if you say anything to anybody they're not going to believe you because of who we are wow but I say to you all, that's not the Spirit of God. Um, you know, um, this pastor was helping himself to me. He would take me out to dinner. And in the public place, he's forcing, you know, his lips on me and, you know, forcing himself on me in a public restaurant, you know, um, touching me and doing all this stuff in a public's eye. And um, he was very bold, he was very bold. Um, and even behind closed doors, he was trying to bed me, you know, trying to get me to have sex with him. And, um, you know, eventually it, at this time, you know, um, time went by, you know, I end up getting married and that the what the pastor was doing never stopped he continued to put his hands on me to you know pressure you know uh me to to be with him intimately and um say it's okay he'd get up in a pulpit and say to wait for marriage but then he would try to force himself on me right after service or you know would take me out and say oh it's okay for you to give yourself to me that's hypocrisy he wasn't living what he was preaching and I couldn't I understand at the time like what's going on why is this happening when he put you know such an act on in front of the church as though he's this you know powerful godly man not so and um, you know he would laugh in my face and you know it would hurt me so because I'm like no not again you know you leave from one church to the next thinking you're gonna go to a better place and you know my hopes in you know going to this church was you know to have a wonderful experience with the people and to have a true pastor that loved Jesus and that sincerely care about the people. Um, this pastor, you know, my whole almost 12 years that I was there, I, he didn't give me rest trying to bed me. Um, I ended up leaving for a short period of time and I came, I, I left after I got a divorce uh, from my marriage, I was married to a minister there at the church. Amanda, mm -hmm. just, a, just a moment, everyone. Amanda, yes, would you go see what your sister needs? Thank you. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. But, um, you know, after my first marriage, um, I left and I was broken, I was hurt. Um, over uh, just how my ex-husband treated me in the marriage. I was a good wife to him and he took advantage of my kindness and um, he, you know, used me and, um, you know, laughed in my face. He was abusive every day, you know, um, and um, it was just a lot, a lot. And the people in the church, they all defended him and they were on his side. It was a laugh. Everybody was laughing. Uh, the more they hurt me, the, the more the church came together to um, attack me. And I have a pause to show the program so I wouldn't interrupt the video. Mm -hmm. I just cracked it like this mm -hmm. so that he could just. You know, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Wash and him. So, yes, ma'am. And so. Um, it was a joke. My hurt, my pain was a joke because, you know, it was like their goal was to control me. They wanted control of my mind. They wanted control of everything that I do. Um, they wanted to just control everything that had to do with me. And because I have a mind of my own, they felt they needed to come together 
to attack me, to get me to, um, to get me, uh, to, I guess, under control. They wanted to control, you know, um, me having a mind of my own. And when I questioned things that they did and, you know, they didn't like that. They didn't like the things that, they didn't like the fact that I was standing up to them, questioning their actions. Why are you doing this? You know, this is not of Christ. Why are you acting in this manner? You know, they just wanted me to do what they were demanding that I do and don't ask any questions to be a little robot or a puppet. That's not who I am. That's not Amanda. Um, and as far as the pastor, you know, the pastor is one of the ones that threatened my life. My my ex-husband is one. You know, my ex-husband threatened me, told me he was going to kill me. He said he was tired of being married. You know, he was cheating. He was cheating uh, from the time I said I do. And when I questioned him, he got tired of, you know, me questioning him. He got tired of, you know, uh, feeling like he need to give an account to me, you know, for his actions. And he was like, Amanda, you know, I'm planning on killing you. He bought a gun and he put it in my drawer and he uncovered it, he, you know, he had it under my clothes and he showed it to me and he said, Amanda, I'm gonna kill you. He said, um, and he said, you know, nobody's gonna believe it. Nobody, he said, nobody's gonna believe you if you said anything to anybody because people don't like you. He said, and I'm gonna pretend that it was self-defense. Um, and the pastor, the pastor told me, you know, um, after my divorce, when I divorced uh, my ex-husband, the pastor told me, he said, Amanda, he said, I don't want you with anybody. He said, I want you for myself. And he was like, um, and if, you know, he said, Amanda, he said, um, I was planning a picnic. And he said, I was going to ask you to come go with me to a picnic. Um, and he was like, um, my plan was to kill you. And he said he had a rope and he was, he had a brick. He said he was going to kill me and he was going to throw my body in the water and he was going to tie the brick to the rope so that my body, the brick will take my body down, down into the water so that my body won't float back up out of the water. And, um, that came from my pastor and so um, I was just shocked on top of being shocked and um, I I couldn't you know hold down food because I was my nerves was wrecked and um, I was being mistreated by the people in the church mistreated by my ex-husband by his family uh, by the pastor I'm one person and all these people was attacking me. Nobody um, was kind. And the, the few that was kind, um, I, well, let me rephrase that. Most of the people mistreated me. There was a few that was kind. And those people that was kind, um, I can count them on my finger. That's how horrible it was. And um, I did say something to some of the ministers in the church about uh, what was happening to me, and they and, and instead of them, be, you know, helping me, uh, um, some of the women uh, ministers became upset because they felt like they wanted that attention that the pastor was giving to me. I mean, he wouldn't leave me alone. He was always coming after me sexually, putting his hands all over me. And they wanted that attention. So they became angry with me and they plotted to hurt me. Um, and it's not, attend that's not the, you know, that's not what I wanted from the pastor. I want, I thought, I looked at him as a father figure. That's what I wanted, you know, from him. I thought he was gonna be like a father to me. You know, I did live in the house with him and his family at a certain point. So that's how I looked at him as a father. But on every hand, you know, he showed me that he is not that godly person that I hope for him to be. Um, and those few people that I said was kind to me, you know, I appreciate your kindness. Um, 
and I did say something as a matter of fact to uh, a, let me see I said something to a daughter one of his daughters I told her what was going on and um, you know um, she knew about it and she laughed about it and she was like I'm not mad she was like if my daddy you know is coming after you for sex she was like you know it's okay with me she was like you know daddy's a man and he needed he needed you know and I'm looking at this person the same person that be speaking in tongues all the time running around the church and and, and uh the same person that, you know, uh, be up preaching and singing, the, you know, singing, you know, uh, beautiful songs to the Lord. I'm like, wow. Just, I was just getting shocked on top of shock, on top of shock. Like, who are these people? Who are they? You know, um, and then the ministers at the church, they were the same. A lot of men in the church and the, a lot of females, they, they had a lot of lustful spirits on them. And those that were married was running behind other women. Men that were married was running behind other women. Women that was married was going behind married men or single men. They didn't care. It Honestly, these people didn't carry on as children of God. And um, there, it's just a gathering every Sunday, a gathering for Sunday school, a gathering for um, Bible study, a gathering for, you know, service nights. And, you know, there's a lot of gossiping going on and a lot of, you know, um, a lot of haters, you know. It was about people trying to get other people under their control. And those that they could not get under their control, they attacked. And I am one of the ones they could not get under their control. First of all, God called me. I didn't call myself and God began to reveal to me who they were. He began to show me who they were, but it was some, something that I had to go through so that I would know how these people look so that I can help others along the way. God know that I would stand up and say something about it. And um, I'm thankful that I am one that, you know, God chose to be able to go through this so that I can help others to, to come out of it. Wake up, my brothers and sisters, wake up. Don't play, don't play with your soul. Don't do that, don't do that. Your soul is too precious. I love you too much. I love you too much. And I'm here to let you know that you're being deceived. Don't let this continue, wake up. And that's what this whole, um, reading is about tonight um you know we're living we're, we are living in you know the last days and there are going to be many there are going to be many that say they're coming in the name of jesus but they are not and um jesus said that i came that you may have life and that you ha may have life more abundantly he loves you and you know broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And there's gonna be a very narrow, narrow road that lead to salvation, that leads to the kingdom of heaven. You have many that's going down that broad, that, that you have many people that is going down that broad road. There are many people that is not gonna make it to heaven that you think is gonna make it to heaven. But there are few, that road is very narrow of the people that are going to heaven and I am here to say I would love I would love for those to wake up and get your life right with Jesus so that one day we can rejoice together and we can make it you know by making it into the kingdom of heaven and living our life forever with Jesus um, I love you all enough to tell you the truth and um, I want you all to wake up that's what this is about and um, walk away get away from situations like that you can serve Jesus anywhere you can serve Jesus at home you talk prayer is talking having a conversation with Jesus the more you give yourself to him the more he will reveal from heaven 
his ways to you. But you got to make a sacrifice. You got to, you know, give yourself to him. If you don't take time to get to know him, how would you know when he speak to you? How would you know when there, you, you are surrounded by wolves and sheep clothing? You're not going to know because you haven't made the time to get to know your maker. Get the time to know Jesus so that when these demonic possessed people come to you and try to get you off course, you will know who they are. Rebuke them if you have to. Rebuke that spirit and keep it moving because you don't have time for their foolishness. Keep it moving. God have a work for you all, those that are coming to him. God have a work for you all. Now is the acceptable time to get it right so that you know you can get on the right course so that Jesus could have his perfect work in your life so that you can be one of those to help others along the way. I said to Jesus, Lord, use me so that my living won't be in vain. I'm here to say, I'm your sister in Christ and I love you. Right now, this second, this moment, make Jesus your choice. I love you all. I'm going to say to you all, don't let this moment pass you by. And this is simply keeping it real. Hasta la próxima. Buenas noches. Te quiero. Adiós. Oh goodness, God damn it. I keep on <laughs> What? I keep I <laughs> I keep on I Ew. I keep on in love with you. Stop I, I keep on <laughs> <laughs>